Snowflake scripting is now in GA. That means you can now write and share stored procedures in Snowflake using SQL. We're still able to write stored procedures in JavaScript, Java, and soon Python, but I love how simple life can be when using just SQL constructs. And you might feel the same, because during the public preview, we saw incredible adoption and usage of this feature. For example, you can see my Medium post from February, where I showed how much less code you need when writing the same start procedure in SQL instead of JavaScript. In this case, I took an answer that I had already posted on Stack Overflow, and you can see how many less lines of code are needed when I rewrote that same answer using SQL instead of JavaScript. And some aspects that are cool to call out. You can either create stored procedures or run this code in anonymous blocks, which makes Snowflake scripting fun within your interactive sessions. Stored procedures can return tables that can be used by the next queries in your session. You can even raise and catch exceptions to control the flow of your code. And speaking of flow, you have keywords to iterate with for, while, repeat, and loop. By the way, I, I want to highlight a series of posts that Rajiv Gupta, a Snowflake data superhero, has published. In each of these, he goes deeper into some topics like branching constructs, PL SQL programming using loops, working with cursors and result sets, and exception handling. To learn more about scripting with SQL, thanks to Snowflake scripting, check the docs, my post, and Rajiv's series. For now, I'm Felipe Hoffa, and this was a Snowflake Byte.